<clears throat> yeah, this is my Heinrich hot air engine. Uh, the smallest Sterling engine Lewis Heinrich he made. Uh, my friend Dick Weiss purchased this hot air engine in 1980 from a Dr. Brenner's family estate sale. Dr. Brenner, as a dentist, used it to power his drill machine for many of his early years in Vogelsville, Pennsylvania practice. He retired at 80 years of age and after my friend Dick's death in 2014, his wife said Dick would like it if I had it now. And ironically, I reside five miles from Dr. Brenner's office. I can start it up for you. It takes a little bit for it to warm up. It runs on alcohol. Uh, alcohol is funny, you can't see it sometimes, but the flame is there. You got to be careful with alcohol. So I put the burner in there. It does take a, a minute or two for it to warm up. While it's doing that, let me tell you a little bit about Lewis Heinrich. -y. This is just, like I said, this is the smallest engine Lewis Heinrich -y made. If used in the Victorian households for a fountain, and uh, let me uh, get it a little bit closer for you, so you can see the top of the engine itself. And I'll turn it. Uh, they use it for a fountain pump and other domestic applications, as well as the purpose that this particular hot air engine was used for. My friend purchased this engine from a local dentist, uh, the, his estate, about uh, 40 years ago. I usually went to the auctions with him, and uh, I missed this one, so my friend got it. I've been after this engine for a good 30 years now. Uh, the dentist was long retired and used it to run his uh, dental drill at the beginning of his career. Upon his passing, like I said, my friend said I should have it now. Through research, I found out that it is a is from uh, the third quarter of the 19th century, about 1885. Louis Heinrich was born in 1847. He began manufacturing hot air engines in about 1876. And after his death, the company went, was taken over by his son, Ernst Heinrich who concentrated on more larger hot air engines. The son never made a model as small as this engine. The, the piston diameter, that's the power piston diameter in there, is 30 millimeters in diameter. Uh, the engine itself is 18 inches tall and seven inches in diameter, so it's quite small. Let's see if we can get it going now. making sure that it is on, did light up. Yes, it did. And I, I boosted the, the heat up considerably just to get it going. And I'll turn it down. Now she's starting. There you can see it. Now I'll, I'll give you some close-ups of it.
There you can see, they're on the side there you can see. I'll focus in on them. There's the pulley that this one had on it because this was, was running a dental drill. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but on this here you can see three little tiny holes on the surface there. If this was used to run a, uh, a pump, then there would have been a little uh, a pump on that side that uh, centrifugally uh, ran off of the flywheels. Because they used to put like uh, ferns and flowers and stuff like that in their house in the Victorian times. And uh, this would be a fountain that was also part of that. But in this case, this one was used to power up uh, a dental drill. Typically, uh, hot air engines or Stirling cycle engines, as they're really called, uh, don't have all that much power. So, I'm sure he had to run this at full speed and run it at a high belt ratio so that he could get the power to uh, uh, use the drill in uh, somebody's cavities. I remember as a boy, those were big drills being used and uh, they used to shake your whole brain matter as they went running around. Now they all use uh, turbine-driven uh, drills, so uh, this is a well of the thing of the past. But there you go, and it's uh, Heinrichy's, uh, Lewis Heinrichy's uh, smallest engine that he made. I think he made about six or seven different sizes. But this was a tiny one, and this is from the Victorian era, 1890 or thereabouts. And uh, I hope you liked it, and I thank you for watching. <laughs>